Well, thank you so much, Nimai, for joining us today. I'm, I really appreciate you coming down here to answer some questions for all of those wondering how you can get your nutrition with a plant-based diet. So if you'd like to give like a small interview or a small something about yourself. Yeah, show. just to tell you guys a little bit more about myself. My name is Nimai Delgado. I am a plant-based professional bodybuilder. Um, I was actually raised vegetarian since birth, so I've never consumed any sort of uh, beef, chicken, fish, uh, and then when I was about 25, so almost actually three years ago, my birthday was two days ago. Mm -hmm. So three years ago, uh, I learned a little bit more about kind of the atrocities and what was really going on behind the scenes mm -hmm. as far as the dairy industry. So once I kind of opened my eyes to that, I never looked back and just put it aside and made the decision that I didn't want to participate in that type of industry. Um, and at the same time, it was right around the same time I started bodybuilding. And um, yeah, since then, it's just kind of taken off. I've been able to build muscle, maintain muscle, lean down for bodybuilding shows, and uh, all on a plant-based diet. And it's, it's been an incredible journey because it was something that I never even imagined doing when I was younger. I would, if, I would, if you would have told me three years ago that I would be here interviewing. You've been doing this for three years? Yeah, so I've always been sort of, I've always been athletic. Mm -hmm. So I've always been like, you know, really into sports and everything, but it, it was like, I, I consider my bodybuilding career when I started taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. So having a regimented diet, uh, a specific workout plan that was dedicated to a specific goal that I had in mind. So either I was building muscle or cutting down. And I'm the type of person that when I do something, I go like 100%, mm -hmm. you know, I'm on both feet in as soon as I start something. So that's when I consider bodybuilding. Because I would go in the gym and kind of, I was a recreational lifter. I'd go in there just like without really any kind of direction or plan. I'd be like, oh, I'll do this, I'll do that. But now, bodybuilding is so much different because you have to look at your body as a sculpture. You know, basically you're an artist. You're trying to put on a little bit more size in this area, trying to be proportional, trying to be aesthetic as much as possible. And um, yeah, once I started doing that, it, it, it was amazing because it was all plant-based, right? So. I learned so much about nutrition in that time period when I started researching about giving up the the dairy industry, you know what I mean, the cheese, because really I was just eating cheese and whey and yogurt, and that was like the main sources I had to give up. Really? Yeah, because I, I, like I said, I was no fish, no chicken, anything mm -hmm. like that. But once I gave it up, it, it was like everything just felt fresh. I, I can't really explain it, but if you ever talk to somebody that recently went vegan or rec recently went plant-based, they'll tell you about how about two to three weeks in, they feel Clear. cleansed. Yeah. yeah, they feel mentally more clear. Their mm -hmm. mind is a little bit more uh, sharper, sharper, just more relaxed. Mm -hmm. And their body regenerates quicker. You know, I've been able to recover so much quicker on a plant-based diet. Um, less inflamed. I don't have any kind of like chronic injury or chronic pain. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like the healthiest I've ever been. Amazing. And I'm the oldest I've ever been. So it's like <laughs> it's a great it's a great diet and a great lifestyle. So yeah, sorry, I just went on a rant, but no, a little bit more about myself. You just answered so many questions that I was wondering. <laughs> so you've been doing this for three years then. Yes, so like I said, I've been in and out of the gym since I was 16, mm -hmm. uh, but after college I moved to California, I went to, I went to school in Louisiana, mm -hmm. moved to California, the town where I lived in there wasn't much to do, mm -hmm. so I, like I said, I'm a very competitive person, so when I was in college I focused a lot, my competitiveness was my grades, mm -hmm. right? so getting my degree, learning more, uh, just becoming a little bit more intellectually sharp. And then after that, I needed something to focus on outside of work, and that's when I kind of went to the gym. I didn't know many people, so I was like, oh, I'll just go make friends in the gym. Mm -hmm. Started going to the gym, taking it a little bit more seriously, met some people that were already in the industry, and they were like, hey, you know, you look good, you should think about doing a show. Mm -hmm. Eight weeks later, I did my first show, and I took the overall, and afterwards people started asking me they're like well, what did you do yeah. what like what did you eat what how did you lift you know how did you come in so so lean and everything else and i was like well i'm a little bit of a different i'm a little bit of a unique case because i did it all plant based and they're like Poof. yeah I'm they're like their mind is blown they're like how did you do that like tell me more i want to know what you ate exactly like that's something i'd be interested in and like once people started showing so much interest I was like, oh, maybe I should start sharing my journey, you know, because for me, growing up in Mississippi, in Louisiana, it, it was very difficult because they're not the most open-minded people there, you know, they're great people, but sometimes they're in their own little world and anything outside of that world is, they can, it, different is not 
good. You know what I mean? Like it's here. Yeah, something they don't understand, they tend to judge. So growing up with that, I was always a little bit more reserved about telling people that I, I was a vegetarian mm -hmm. because I go to barbecues and different gatherings and birthday parties and stuff, and they'd be like, "Oh, we got these burgers," and I'm just like. All right, well, I'll make like a Dorito sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> now, was that like, a temptation for you when you went to those parties? Did you feel like you... No, not at all. So, I, like I said, I was raised a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. So, my background is uh, I'm Argentinian. Mm -hmm. My blood is Argentine. I was born in the United States, but my parents converted to Hinduism whenever they were in their early 20s. Mm -hmm. So, Hinduism was kind of getting westernized at that time, and they jumped on board, and they really identified with a lot of the philosophies of Hinduism. And one of the philosophies is that you know, uh, your souls get reincarnated and every being on this planet has a soul within it. Mm -hmm. And consuming or, or it's not it's not necessarily your right to decide whether or not something lives mm -hmm. or dies, you know. So if we have the ability, we're we're conscious beings. Mm -hmm. So we that's what separates us from animals is that we have the ability to make decisions based off of what is right and what is wrong. Mm -hmm. So in Hinduism right, it's wrong to eat meat because you you're you're contributing to an, a being suffering, mm -hmm. dying, and then on top of that, you're consuming it. So, my philosophy is that you know, at the time of death for an animal, um, they experience a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. They experience fear. You know, you, you can look especially in, in the industry here. Exactly, you can look into an animal's eyes and identify with it. You can see whether a dog is scared mm -hmm. or not. You can look into a cow's eyes and realize that it's feeling some type of emotion. You mm -hmm. know, when, by body language, even though you can't identify with like the facial expressions, mm -hmm. you can see the body language of an animal and saying like, "Hey, I'm scared right now. Mm -hmm. I'm terrified." So imagine being in a in a in a jail cell being ushered to your deathbed, mm -hmm. you're going to feel a lot of different things. You're going to feel fear, rage, anxiety, stress, mm -hmm. all these different things that are chemical releases from your Absolutely. brain, right? They're hormones. And at the time of death, that those hormones kind of get imprinted onto the meat. They get stamped, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think about it from that perspective, once, once the animal dies, it gets chopped up, it gets delivered to where it gets mm -hmm. delivered, it ends up on your plate. You consume that energy, mm -hmm. you consume that stress and anxiety, that rage, that, mm -hmm. that animalistic characteristics that become a part of you. So it becomes part of your energy. And afterwards, once you kind of cleanse yourself from it, you become a little bit more humane, you become a little bit more compassionate, you become more aware of your human side mm -hmm. rather than the animalistic side. And I typically don't talk about it too much from that perspective mm -hmm. because religion, politics, ethics, mm -hmm. they tend to be very uh, difficult topics for people to open their mind about. Mm -hmm. So it's more black or white when it comes to those topics. So I always approach it from a health perspective mm -hmm. because the science is there. Mm -hmm. Doctors are endorsing it. They're saying, you know, hey, there's this diet that we're kind of avoiding, but it's like the answer is right in front of us. You know, mm -hmm. when you go to a, when you're overweight and you go to a doctor, they don't tell you, hey, go eat more hamburgers. They tell you, hey, go eat more plants. It's true. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. hospitals aren't filled with dying protein deficient vegans. They're dying with people that have been living an unhealthy lifestyle and, and mm -hmm. consuming massive amounts of meat that is very hard to digest. And that's why they're having chronic heart disease, they're having high cholesterol, they're having mm -hmm. heart attacks, they're having all these things. You don't see people that are living plant based, you know, filling up hospitals. It's just, so it's just like a simple connection there mm -hmm. that people are kind of just not seeing. Mm -hmm. So it's like, now I feel like people are kind of catching on. They're kind of getting a little bit more interested in, in the plant-based lifestyle and saying, hey, you know, maybe I can be a little bit more healthier. Maybe like the the method or the way I've been brought up to think about what's healthy and what's not healthy isn't necessarily in my best interest. Maybe there was a company that was kind of promoting something to profit off of mm -hmm. the uneducated. Mm -hmm. And now here we are, we're trying to educate people and show, you know, through different methods, through my type of activism is more more passive, you know, I'm approaching it from a way that everybody can identify with, mm -hmm. you know, everybody, whether you believe in this or believe in that, everybody can identify with being healthier, mm -hmm. living longer, mm -hmm. spending time with your family for another couple of years. Like, mm -hmm. if you could guarantee that your mom or your dad was around for a few more years just by changing their lifestyle a little bit, would you recommend it to them? Mm -hmm. Of course. Mm -hmm. You'd say, hey, all you gotta do is make these small changes and I can spend 10 more years with you. You know, like, who can't identify with that? So, yeah, a little bit different form of activism than most, but it's a very uh, effective way, too. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, that's I so uh, appreciate you sharing yeah. that. And you're living it. Yeah. You don't need to force it on people. Mm -hmm. People are going to come to you mm -hmm. because you are peaceful. Mm -hmm. You are clearly not emaciated. You are taking good care of yourself, mm -hmm. and it's contagious. It is. It is. And it's like, it almost becomes like my body 
Uh, well, okay, so most of the times when you think of bodybuilding, you think of, uh, you know, the big meatheads, the, mm -hmm. the, the bronze but no brain kind of guys. So here, here I am, I'm trying to kind of break that mold mm -hmm. and make the connection between intelligence, you know, looking good, feeling good, and showing people that you, you, can, you can do both. You know, and my body is, is basically a business card for plant-based lifestyles mm -hmm. because people come up to me, they ask me, they say, what do you do? And I say, well, I'm vegan. And they're like, shut the front door. You know, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like tell me more, yeah. you know? And like, like I said, it, it's, a, it, it, it's an approach where everybody can relate to. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a bit of a vain sport in mm -hmm. nature mm -hmm. because you have to be, you know, looking at yourself and all this stuff. But it, it's, a, it's a passive form of activism that it is very effective, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I don't have to wear t-shirts that say, hey, I'm vegan. But I think right. that's a great form of activism because it starts a conversation. Right. For me, it's more like, you, you can't tell a vegan just by somebody walking down the street if mm -hmm. somebody's like, hey, that guy's, or that woman's vegan. Mm -hmm. But you can tell a bodybuilder. True. Right? You can tell a bodybuilder right off the bat, like that guy spends a lot of time in the gym mm -hmm. working out, like, he looks good, I wonder what he's doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's, just, it's a different method, but uh, yeah, so far it's been working pretty well. So. so speaking of spending time in the gym, mm -hmm. how often do you work out? Um, so I try to work out as much as I can. Like, being it is the, your business, and the more you yeah. work at it, the better it's going to get. So exactly. do you take a day off? If I have to. I mean, I, I, I'm big on listening to my body. Uh -huh. So I work, I work five days a week. I have a regular nine to actually 6.30 to 4 job. So I work nine hours a day. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, you know, I, my second job is going to the gym. I thought this was your full-time job. Oh my no, gosh. No, how you, no so. body, bodybuilding is like a fraction of my day. Wow. But like I said, I go every, I do everything with 100% effort because mm -hmm. I feel like if you're going to do something, do it right, mm -hmm. do it well, do it the best way you can. And the, the two hours, I, I spend about two hours in the gym mm -hmm. every day if I can. And that's including cardio, that's including weightlifting, that's including mm -hmm. me talking to people. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it always ends up happening. Of course. Uh, so yeah, about two hours in the gym every day, one rest day if I if my body needs it. Mm -hmm. But I try to split up my workouts to where, you know, I'll do upper body this day, lower body this day, kind of a full body circuit the next mm -hmm. day, then arms and legs. So I kind of split it up to where the other body parts are resting mm -hmm. and then I'm targeting the, the specific muscles that I'm trying to build mm -hmm. at that time. So. Let me ask you, what do you do for recovery? Recovery? Uh, I get I get a decent amount of rest. I mean, there's there's three parts to this triangle. You know, you, there's diet, there's nutrition, and there's rest and recovery. The actual growing part, mm -hmm. where you get bigger, is when you're resting and when you're recovering. You're not building in the gym, you're actually breaking down in the gym. Mm -hmm. So rest and recovery is a very important part of the equation. So you always have to keep that in mind, you know, that's what it's hard for me because I have to taper it back because like mm -hmm. I love working out. So I'm like, I want to go today. I want to go do this again. It's an addiction. It is. It's mm -hmm. a very big addiction. So you have to kind of remind yourself that you're not going to grow. Like you can overwork yourself and that's right. what causes injury. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that one time you went to the gym, that extra day where you should have been resting mm -hmm. and you tore a ligament, you know, you're right. never going to forgive yourself for that because you're never going to recover 100% mm -hmm. from that. So rest is definitely important. And finding an appropriate balance between whatever my goal is. So you can you can determine what your daily requirement is as far as like calorie wise, mm -hmm. right? If you're trying to build weight, you calculate what your maintenance calories are based off of your age, your weight, your height, mm -hmm. your sex, your activity level, everything like that. And say let's say it's two thousand calories, mm -hmm. right? So that's just to maintain what you already have, just right. to live, walk around, everything else. But if you have a specific fitness goal in mind, you either want to, most of the times, either you want to gain weight or lose weight, mm -hmm. right? Either you gain, maintain, or lose. Mm -hmm. So if you want to gain weight, obviously you have to eat more because you can't just create muscle out of thin air. You have to eat food, it has to be converted to the right, you know, the right proteins, and then mm -hmm. it has to be built onto your body. So you have to be sure to consume the right amount of calories first. And then you have to start worrying about the macronutrient breakdown because mm -hmm. there's different ways of optimizing how to lose weight, different mm -hmm. ways how to optimize how to gain weight. Mm -hmm. So there's different types of diet like keto. Keto is like, you know, no high fat, high fat no carbs, which no, I don't I don't believe in that too much if you know you're 
it, maybe if it's a, if it's an effective way to lose weight quickly, if you're mm -hmm. a, bit, a bit obese, a bit overweight, but if you're already lean, keto is not necessarily the most optimal not way. Not a long term way. It's not a lot. No, definitely no. It's not built for longevity. It's built for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. I think people forget that they say, "Hey, I've been living keto for." A year now, mm -hmm. like I feel like death. And but that's an emergency <laughs> state that your body is. It is. It is. You're actually changing the chemical composition of your brain to consume fats for a different mm -hmm. type of energy source, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but as far as macros go, uh, just to give you guys more of an idea, uh, I tend to go about 20 to 25 percent of my calorie intake from protein. That's mm -hmm. normally the, the biggest question I get asked mm -hmm. is how much protein do you get? So I go 20 to 25%. I kind of fluctuate between there. I don't really go exact numbers. Um, then I maintain my fats pretty, pretty consistent throughout my entire prep, whether I'm gaining or losing, mm -hmm. right? So 50 to 80 grams of fat, but that's just me. I weigh 180 pounds and I'm 5'9", mm -hmm. somewhere around there. And then I use my carbohydrates as a moderator. Mm -hmm. You know, you can always use your carbohydrates to either gain a little bit quicker or lose a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. So I kind of keep those two consistent and then use my carbs as a moderation mm -hmm. technique. And it's really good because another advantage of a plant-based diet is that inherently we have a lot, we eat a lot more carbs, mm -hmm. right? Because not, of, not a lot of our sources have a whole they're not so dense with protein, but they're dense with other things like micronutrients, you know, fiber, carbohydrates, everything. So we inherently eat more carbs and the fitness industry now has kind of demonized, mm -hmm. they've demonized fat and they've demonized carbs. Mm -hmm. So what's left? It's only protein. That's why people harp on protein. They're so adamant about like protein equals healthy, mm -hmm. which is not always the case. It's not always the case. You know, there's, there's, two other legs of that triangle that you have to incorporate into your diet. You can't just forget about it. You can't just say, hey, I'm going to eat 200 grams of protein. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to eat any carbs because they're going to make me fat. I'm not going to eat fat because it makes me fat. You know, mm -hmm. fat's an essential part of your diet that it, 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 it regulates a lot of hormonal function, you know, especially for guys. It regulates testosterone, uh, carbohydrates, you know, it's your main source of energy. It's your primary source of energy. So once you start to cut those things, your body starts to get to a little bit of a limbo. Mm -hmm. So veganism and plant-based diet it, it it's good because like I talk to guys who are bodybuilders and they're like, man, I haven't had a carb in six months. I'm like, dude, I just had 300 <laughs> carbs yesterday, and I'm leaner than you are. Right. And they're like, what the heck? You know, like, tell me more. And like, now I'm interested. You You're know? right. They don't associate it with energy. They don't. Which is what it is. They, they associate it as like the devil, the enemy. It, exactly. They demonize it so much. So. We have to kind of shift the way people think about carbs, fats, and mm -hmm. protein. And, and yes, of course, protein is important for building muscle. Mm -hmm. It's important for all your bodily functions as far as amino acids go and everything. But carbs and fat aren't the devil. Mm -hmm. You know, you can definitely incorporate them into a diet, have quite a significant amount of them, mm -hmm. and still lose weight. Right. And still shred up or still get big. So. And the moral of the story is it has to be from real source. Exactly. Not Captain Crunch. Exactly. <laughs> Not all <laughs> calories are created equal. Exactly. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So whole food sources, rice, quinoa, potatoes, mm -hmm. vegetables, lentils, tofu. I mean, all of those are great sources of energy that are whole food based. They're not mm -hmm. processed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They haven't been through this gigantic refining mm -hmm. process and kind of stripped away all the essential micronutrients that essentially make that food healthy. Uh, in exchange for mass quantities, mm -hmm. right? Because if it's cheaper to make, people are going to make it cheaper, exactly. profit a little bit more. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important to, you know, think about where your food comes from and, and think about from its inception to where it landed up on your plate. Mm -hmm. And it got, that's especially important when it comes to meat is because people don't make that connection. They just say, hey, this piece of meat landed on my plate. I'm going to eat it. Mm -hmm. I don't think about what goes on behind the scenes and what it took mm -hmm. to actually get there. You know, a little, say, chicken, mm -hmm. they had to, they had to create a little chicken, a little, you know, a little bird. Mm -hmm. They had to raise it in a factory with the lights off and pump it full of God knows what. Mm -hmm. And then just to get it as fat as possible, as quick as possible. Like, that's no way for an animal to, that's not natural. It's not natural. Mm -hmm. Like, chickens don't go from zero to 12 pounds in 28 days naturally. Right. You know what I mean? But here they are pumping these chickens mm -hmm. full of everything. They're chopping them up, they're shipping them out, they end up on your plate and you're like, oh sweet, a piece of chicken. Mm -hmm. And they eat it, right? <laughs> they don't make that connection, but 
once you start watching documentaries and, and start digging a little bit deeper, you kind of start to question like, whoa, I never knew that. Like I never knew that was going on. And that I'm was eating. a game changer for me. Yeah. Can you share maybe two of your top two game changing documentaries that just oh. changed your outlook? Definitely What the Health. I don't know if that one's a recent one that's come mm -hmm. out and luckily they've been they've got it on Netflix so even since that one launched I mean it's a bit of an unbiased approach and it's it's more of along the lines of scientific mm -hmm. data rather than kind of a, a vegan agenda where mm -hmm. it's like hey you need to you know it's 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 more scientific than anything mm -hmm. which everybody can get on board with because mm -hmm. it's very hard to argue science-based facts and doctors telling you this it's right. like, you might have an idea in your head but are you gonna really argue with a doctor it's true you know what I mean mm -hmm. so it, that's a big eye-opener um, Probably another one of my favorites was Cowspiracy, mm -hmm. you know, so... Is that what made you cut out dairy products? Um, no, I, it wasn't a specific um, documentary that made me cut out dairy products. It was just my own research, just mm -hmm. um, actually funny story. When I was when I first moved to California, I was still vegetarian. I went down to Huntington Beach, mm -hmm. and I was just walking around. I was actually coming back from San Diego. I stopped in Huntington because it's one of my favorite spots in California, and there, there was actually a pita protest going on and the protest was a big giant plate and they had these big carrots big peas and then they had two people in a bodysuit like a, a nude bodysuit kind of curled up like a piece of chicken and then had a big sign that says how does it look now right mm. <laughs> how does it look now right yeah. and I was like wow that's that's pretty like uh, impactful disturbing <laughs> yeah it's a little bit disturbing to think of it that way you know it's a being it's a human yeah. and once you can make that connection it's a great form of activism but after that, a lady came up to me because I was watching it from the uh, from the pier itself, and it was down mm -hmm. on the boardwalk. A lady came up to me, and she's handing out pamphlets, and she hands me a pamphlet, and she's like, "Hey, um, have you heard about veganism and everything?" And I was like, "Oh, super proud." I was like, "Actually, I'm, I'm a vegetarian," and she was like, kind of looks at me, and she's like, "Well, did you know that the dairy industry is?" the dairy and egg industry is probably one of the most cruel of them all. Like, have you ever looked into, you know, the, the atrocities and the, the injustices and just everything that's going on behind the scenes? And I was like, no. And she kind of did it in an aggressive manner. Mm -hmm. Because like, I, I was proud. I was like, hey, you know, I've never eaten meat before. Right, instead of congratulating you for what yeah. you have done. Yeah, she's like, well, you're still contributing and you're <laughs> still a monster. And I'm like, I kind of, I, it, it turned me off. Like, realistically, it turned me off. And that's what I always, like, opened my eyes about different forms of activism is that I don't like the aggressive approach. Mm -hmm. Because if you tell somebody they're doing something wrong, you're automatically going to get, on, get the defense. on the defensive side, right? So I, I handed her the pamphlet back. And I said, you know what? I was like, I'm, I'm good right now. Mm -hmm. But it, it kind of like planted the seed in my head right. at the same time. So I went back home and I started researching it a little bit more. And that's when I found out kind of all of this like, I, I don't know, you have to do the research for yourself. Yeah. I can't, ex like me telling you is not going to make you change your mind. Just go do your own research and let it sink in. Like everybody has to make that connection for themselves so for it to really resonate and for it to really stick with you for a long time. Because if you just kind of do it for different reasons, it's very easy to give up something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's very mm -hmm. easy to give up and say, ah, oh, I tried it. It was too hard. Right. You know, but if, if you have that that mental connection, yes. then it, 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 it's not an option to go back. Mm -hmm. You know, you've opened it's your eyes. It's not even a temptation. Yeah, it's not a temptation. Like, exactly like you were saying, I mean, you, you, you never get that temptation mm -hmm. because it's it's not even a question about mm -hmm. it. Like, you've opened your eyes, you know what goes on, and I made a decision not to not to participate. Mm -hmm. So. Wow, I can't thank you enough for sharing with us. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> so, people ask you questions all the time. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. So if people want to ask you more questions, where can they find you? Uh, definitely you can find me on Instagram. It's just my first name, underscore, and my last name. Same with Facebook, same with YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, what else do I have? I have email. You can go, you can find my email on my Instagram. Send me questions. I try to answer as many questions as I can. Mm -hmm. um, I try to put up as much information up as I can as far as what I eat. Kind of uh, spreading a positive message. Oh, share your, the one with all the recipes on it. Oh, so yeah. so. My personal Instagram is at Nimai underscore Delgado, mm -hmm. and then I also have a food page where I share what I eat and I break down the macro percentages, how many calories it is, what the recipes are, mm -hmm. and that one's called Vegan Bodybuilding Food. Really simple to yeah. search. Yeah, <laughs> I made it very simple for everybody. <laughs> if you're like, to that. what do vegan bodybuilders eat? Well, <laughs> I'll just type in vegan bodybuilding food. So just go follow both of them. If you're interested, ask me some questions. I'd love to help you out. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I had a blast. All right. <laughs>